Welcome to the Pillar Podcast, where we put racial equity front and center. Join us as we explore equity. We'll take a look at overcoming opportunity gaps and strategies that ensure equitable learning experiences for all students in JCPS. Good afternoon. We are here with another episode of the Pillar Podcast. My name is Ian Brandon. I am the supervisor of our satellite offices. Today I have with me Selena Fishback the director of the Louisville Teacher Residency Program and some of the Louisville Teacher Residency residents. So hello, I'm Selena Fishback. I am the director of the Louisville Teacher Residency. JCPS began Louisville Teacher Residency in around 2019. We really started building the vision for teacher residency. And we also have some of our residents and one of our mentor teachers here joining our tabletop. And would our residents like to introduce themselves? Hi, my name is uh, Tim Stringer. I have been a resident since June of this year, um, or last year, this year, June of this year. Uh, the reason I chose to join the teacher residency program was because as a substitute teacher for about five years, I really enjoyed teaching with the, uh, uh, being with the children. Um, just have a, um, an excitement uh, as far as working with our young people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I am Jada Bridges. I also started this program in June of this year. Um, what brought me to the education world is, of course, my passion and love for children and their development. But more importantly, um, the lack of representation that I saw in the school system when I came through JCPS and uh, wanting to be that change. Um, yes, my name is Cooley Hall. I am a mentor teacher. Um, I've been teaching here in Jefferson County for about six years now um, it's been pretty awesome but you know what really drew me to the program is that you know I'm a teacher that likes to be hands-on I'm a teacher that's not everything is conventional in my classroom and I feel like that I have a lot to offer teacher residents nice, nice. well uh, let's just get right into it so Ms. Fisbag, tell us a little bit about yourself um, how you ended up in the role that you're currently in? Well, I am actually a product of the Minority Teacher Recruitment Initiative that started in the state of Kentucky around in the 1990s. Um, they started a program called the A-Team at Bowling Green or in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it was at Western Kentucky. I'm from Bowling Green, and I was actually in middle school at the time. And at that time, I hopped into the A-Team because you got to go on a college campus on the weekends. Yeah. And so I joined the A-Team and we talked about education, but of course at 13 years old, you don't really know what you wanna do or where you wanna go. Um, and so I, I had a good time. I developed relationships with people that were in the Louisville community, also at the Western Kentucky community. Um, and that was that. I went on to college at Western Kentucky and I was working in a daycare, but I was actually majoring in sociology. And it just so happens that one of my sorors, I am in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, one of my sorors was the coordinator of the Minority Teacher Recruitment Program at mm. Western Kentucky. Okay. And she essentially approached me and said, hey, I realize you work in a daycare, but you are majoring in sociology. Have you considered education? And at that point, I switched over to the College of Education, and I majored in elementary education. And they gave me a scholarship throughout college. But really, what was the greatest benefit of that program was allowing me to build a networking relationship mm -hmm. with um, trailblazers in the state of Kentucky. Um, so I literally started working with people like Dr. Bonnie Marshall, um, Dr. Lucian Gates at the, he was currently at Kentucky State University, um, just Dr. Lo Helen Hambrick from U of L, just giants in the field of education. And they essentially molded me and fostered me until I was ready to go into the classroom. And once I got to the classroom, they didn't leave me. They mm. kept their hand on me. They supported me through my first years of teaching. Um, and then, of course, when they realized that I had leadership skills, they opened up new sites of where I could set my eyes and 
somehow I fell into leading the ACES program back in 2012 in JCPS. And now here we are with teacher residency. So you started out as an educator. Mm -hmm. So what was it about that experience that sparked a guess, desire for teacher preparation and recruiting? So I moved into the administrative intern role at the central office in 2012. So I've been teaching for four years and that role was really an on the job training mm -hmm for administration and leadership. And I was tasked with leading the ACES program, which was actually a district-based certification program in Jefferson County Public Schools and really the only district-based certification program in the state. Um, and so from there, I really was able to get back to my roots of minority teacher recruitment. And we were focused, laser, laser focused mm -hmm. on recruiting teachers of color so that we could really assist the students of color in our district with providing them with teachers and leaders that look like them. Yeah, so um, I've had the privilege of working with you in the Louisville Teacher Residency Program. Um, so I, I came in at a, at, a, at a unique time. There was mm -hmm. um, the first cohort had already, um, I guess, run its course. They had graduated. So when I came in, it was the start of the second cohort. And I had the privilege of um, walking some of the applicants, now residents, through that process. So um, this first question I, I'll direct to you, Tim. Tell me a little bit about your experience going through the Louisville Teacher Residency application process. It was very fast paced. Uh, thankfully, you saw something in me that, uh, that is allowing me to do what I'm gonna enjoy doing with, with our children. So. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. The next question is, I guess tied to you being the director. What, what sorts of characteristics are you looking for um, when you see applicants applying to the program? Um, I think one of the most important characteristics is passion. Every day is not an easy day when we walk into our school building and we know that some of our students are coming to us with struggles that we've never even experienced as adults, or at least I myself haven't experienced some of those things. So them really wanting to be here. Um, and then also resilience. Mm, I feel big. like if they come to me with passion and resilience, we can teach them everything else that they need while they're with us. Yeah, and it seems like you're, you, I don't say you model after um, those that helped you, but they gave you a solid foundation of what building uh, a support, a network in education looks like. Right? Absolutely, 100%. I would not be where I am or who I am without mentors and individuals that take an interest in me. And I think that that's one of the benefits of the residency program is that I genuinely look at all of our residents, all of our mentor teachers, like family. And so if there is something that I need and I know I have a teacher leader that has developed that skill, I'm calling them first. Mm -hmm. Or in the same token for them, when they have their rough days, they can pick up the phone and know that I'll be right there. Nice, nice. I'm big on networks and I think that's one thing I noticed while working with the program. Um, I use that as a recruitment tool a lot. So. Um, I can attest to that. So. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, Mr. Hall, I know I spoke about ACES earlier and that it was a district-based certification program. I don't know if we have actually announced that you completed the ACES program a few years ago. And so what is your lens of the difference between the ACES program from kind of where we were in the past and where we are now with our current program? Well. The ACES program, I thought, was awesome. Um, you know, the truth is, is that I met lots of people that have been teaching for so many years with so many different ways of teaching. It was, it was awesome. We learned a lot. Um, the biggest difference is the fact that we actually did not get our master's mm -hmm. degree going through the program. Mm -hmm. We were only focused on being certified in this district. 
So, I think that now, after all of these years, this right here is much bigger, mm. much better. I mean, it's, I mean, anything, you know, with time, it just grows leaps and bounds. But I'm, I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> jealous. And, you know, I've been teaching for a while now, so it's been awesome. It's been some awesome experiences. I wish I could have went through the program the way it is now. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. But, oh, yeah. So we would be remiss not to mention our university partner, which is the University of Louisville. Our residents are embedded in a master's program. So within one year, they not only receive their teacher certification and a full year of job experience with JCPS, they mm. also go through a master's program at the University of Louisville. And so Mr. Hall is very much saying that um, it's better now. <laughs> it's simply better. I think it's really killing two birds with one stone mm -hmm. and able to not only give them the field experience in the school district, but also give them the pedagogy and so forth at the university level that they need to be successful. Yeah, I mean, that's to get a master's degree um, and a teaching certification, it's in a, that short of a time frame, it's pretty, pretty intense. Uh, <laughs> having a master's myself, I, I did a two-year program, so I can only imagine going through that coursework and preparing to become an educator at the same time. Um, takes probably a lot of um, self-discipline, work-life balance, right? Um, one thing I think I would like to know if I had not already been exposed to the program. Um, are individuals able to maintain any type of work career while going through the program? Okay. Um, <laughs> I would like to be honest and say I tried, and no, you cannot. Um, I was working, my undergrad degree was in social work, and so I was working at a um, residential facility and I was so closely attached to the kids that I worked with there that I was like, oh, I can go there a couple of days out of the week after school. It's a lot. Like, it's, they just say if you're in a master's program, um, it's a one-year accelerated program. So yeah, I would strongly encourage you not to, um, not only because self-care, but you want to make sure you're giving your babies the, the best of you when you're at school every day. And so, yeah, I, I don't know about anybody else. My experience was like, I had, had a lot going on when I try to do that. So. Well, it's it's almost like the the residency portion of the program, like that is your job, right? Yeah. Yes. So you, um, before we got together today, you mentioned um, an analogy uh, <laughs> about the work, right? Yes. Um, so when people ask me what I do at, in LTR, I always ask them, have you seen Grey's Anatomy? Um, so I compare this year that we're going to to like, when Meredith and all of the other residents at um, Grace Loan, or whatever it's called, <laughs> they um, had their first year and it was just wild and crazy. They had, they just kind of got right into the thick of things immediately and they had crazy days and things, but it was also so rewarding and you learn so much every day, and, but you're also stressed out, but it's so amazing at the same time. So I could, it's definitely Grey's Anatomy in the education is how I can describe what we're doing right now in the best way. Yeah, yeah. But I love it. I love every second of it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. And you know the beauty of what I just heard what you said as far as being stressed out. I'm not stressed out by myself. Yes. So I have 29 other people that I can release my stress and frustrations to and just come back. and yeah. It's like, hey, you got this. I got you. You got me. We're going to get through this thing together. And that just gives me that extra life that I need to make it through this program. Absolutely. And we also have, like, I am... I think I'm the baby of the cohort. <laughs> you are. We all have, but there's a lot of different ages, and so you get so many perspectives. On top of age, people are coming from all different types of career fields. Mm. Myself, I just graduated undergrad last year, so but I have people who have been working in other fields for 20, 30 years, so you have all these different perspectives coming together, and we can bounce ideas off of one another, and it's just, it's great. It's yeah. a great experience. I love it. I love so much yeah. about residency, and I'm glad that you guys have each other. I always tell them when it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're working on a paper, it's not me that you're going to pick up the phone and call, likely. 
but you can call each other. Um, and I know Jada earlier you mentioned about the crazy days. What does a typical residency day look like mm. for you all? I don't know, Tim. I'm gonna say Tuesdays is the crazy day because we're at school from around eight o'clock until four o'clock, and then we go straight to class until seven o'clock. Mm. And then you usually are coming home and working on lesson plans, or and then God forbid you had a kid that had a rough day, or you know a few kids that had a rough day at school. So mm. it's just that would be my definition of a crazy day. On top of your bell work, the homework coming to and yeah. That would be my definition. So my, my equation to that is every day something's due tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. that I like that. So. <laughs> I like that. That is true. So we talked about um, the networking and building that community. Um, how do you guys as residents work together, whether it's building lesson plans or, like you said, being a support system? Kind of tell us a little bit about the dynamic and the residents' relationship. So we we actually we started in the summer. We started online, so we got to see everyone's faces mm -hmm. um, before because we're still doing the pandemic when we started. Once we seen each other in faith uh, in person after being online, it was a little bit, it was a genuine excitement because we had seen these people on camera. And, <laughs> but then when you see, hey, yes. hey, so, and so it really person. started. It started then when we started meeting face to face, um, and then we just started building. By, so you, you know, when you're when you're in groups like this, you still start gravitating towards certain people, mm -hmm. like-minded mm -hmm. people, and so it was it was interesting to see that a lot of people for me was in education. Not like Jada. I'm one of the old ones of the group. I've been I've been out of school for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> and for me to go back at this stage in my life was just a little. At first, it was a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But as the time goes on, it, it's starting to kind of mellow out. But it's still tough. Mm -hmm. It's still tough. But I know I have my residents. Uh, I know they got my back. Uh, I've had some just giving me some words of encouragement. I too have been that person to speak uh, affirmations over their life and help them get through whatever it is that they're going through. So I have a lot of them's phone number yeah. and we're in the group yeah. text and we meet on a regular basis because we need that support from one another. Yeah. That's awesome. Man. So what is the, um, obviously you're committed throughout the program, but tell us a little bit about the transition from being a resident to actually becoming a teacher of record. So the residents, I'm super excited. Um, I, don't know, I feel like I've put this on your all's matrix, so you see it coming. Um, but we are doing a spring preview day, May 10th, I believe. And that is going to be an opportunity to where all of our AIS principals, mm -hmm. AIS is Accelerated Improvement School, will have an opportunity to come meet the residents face-to-face -face in an informal capacity. Um, so the residents will be able to share their portfolio of work that they've been mm -hmm. doing this year. They'll be able to introduce themselves, just meet and greet and get to know individuals, kind of see what school communities they may be interested in working in. Um, and then as soon as we complete the LTR graduation ceremony, JCPS actually presents our residents that complete the program successfully with a conditional contract. Mm. And so what a conditional contract is essentially saying that if you settle all of these things that you're supposed to settle, you pass your test, you've graduated, you complete the online application for JCPS, we will make sure you have a position in our school district. And so that is kind of the weight off of their shoulder, mm. right? They yeah. know that they're going to be employed in JCPS as a rank two teacher. Um, and then over the summer is when principals start to formally interview for their school communities. So residency does not place the residents in school buildings. What we do is initiate the contact with principals. And so if I know a principal is looking for a teacher and they just so happen to have a kindergarten teacher position available, I may say, oh, I have an amazing resident that wants to teach kindergarten. You should interview him or her. Mm -hmm. And so they'll take priority in interviewing our residents before they interview outside candidates from JCPS. Um, and so that's when they will start interviewing. Our principals are extremely eager 
to interview the residents. They always get excited. I almost have to tell them, wait a minute, they're, they have not passed that test yet. <laughs> you, need, you need to hold on yeah. for a second. Um, but it's a pretty smooth yeah. process, and it's a celebration essentially all summer. The residents are excited to get in there, start setting up their classrooms. Yeah. They're able to set up their classrooms as early as June or July. Um, I know that's different for me. I didn't get to set up my classroom until a week before school started. Um, And also pacing and planning and so Mm. forth. So really taking away some of the stress at the beginning of the school year for new teachers. And I could see I could see why principals would be eager. Right. Because you you have eager individuals who want to become educators, right? They, they're going through this intense program. They've been in an AIS school for essentially a full academic year. So they know what they're getting into. They've been exposed to it. So I think that, that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. I'd like to add to that. You know, as a mentor teacher, I have already had a couple of principals ask me about my residents in my class. So, yeah, it's... A, it comes full circle, uh, right? It, it, Especially yeah, for you, it's come full like, circle oh, for definitely. you. Definitely. That's awesome. Highly competitive on the principal's end. Yes, it but is. But they are yes, wanting to get in front of each other to get to the residents. Yeah. And so it's... um, we, we talked a little bit about application process, what a day looks like, um... Can, I'll say, let's go Jada. Can you share um, what the financial commitment looks like? Kind of what was that? um, Okay. What was that like for you? For financial commitment, um, there's kind of two sides to it. So someone like me, I just graduated, so I didn't have like, you know, a real salary anyway. But people um, coming out of other career fields, you may be taking like a, step back a step back a little bit just for a year though because when you get when you get your, your stuff ready then you're coming in as a rank two teacher so you're kind of you're, you're gonna come back up but you're gonna have to take a step back for a year so that side of things and then also um, we are UofL students so we are required to pay tuition but um, we were fortunate enough this past summer like our summer courses were um, covered JCPS has a tuition reimbursement for a program that we were fortunate enough to be a part of and so all of our summer tuition was paid off awesome. and um, yeah. we have opportunities for that every semester it's just the JCPS thing they have to figure out where the funds co- are coming from but we have that opportunity if you apply for it early enough um, so I think that I don't think my financial burdens have been too great but I don't think there's been anything like I, I don't think I can make it through the program so it's so the 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 financial I think what I hear you saying is the financial commitment does not outweigh the benefit, no. the short and the long term of it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's just the year, so you know if you can make it work for a year for the the career choice that you want, then that sacrifice I feel like is worth it. And it flies, right? Like you're yeah. you're in the current cohort, right? So yeah. you began in June. And it's crazy because we were just talking, we have like, what, six months, if that left, Mm -hmm. maybe five and a half, and it's just kind of like flying. It's flying by. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I'll be so sad to lose you guys when you go on to teaching (laughs) positions, too. She's not getting rid of me. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Um, Yeah, so uh, we talked about residency, the beginning and the end. What does... I'm interested to see like a little bit more of the day to day, right? So the days you're in the classroom, right? You're working with a coach, you're working with the mentor teacher, kind of talk to us a little bit about that dynamic. We work with the students through transitions. We actually meet in groups every day. Mm. You know, I, I meet with the math group and a reading group on a daily basis. Um, and then just trying to make sure I'm prepared to teach whatever lesson or lessons uh, for the day, uh, just being prepared to you know, have my script. So, so there's a lot of pressures that go into that. I feel like I'm in front of an audience all the time. Uh, but the biggest audience that I want to make sure I get across is my students. Those are the most important. I know I got a lot of adults in there watching and critiquing, and that's all fine and good. But I want to know, what do I look like to my children? That's, that's the most important thing to me. 
Uh, I would have to agree with that as well. We do have a lot of eyes on us all the time, um, but also the kids are the ones, and you can really tell when they're when they're feeling what you're saying, or they understand, and you can you can tell. And running that classroom management is a big part of it as well because, um, as someone said, kids don't care what you know until they know that you care, Ooh. and so learning your mm. students and what makes them excited to learn and what they don't really care to know or how you can make them care about it, that type of thing. So it's just been a, a journey finding that balance. And then I think it's going to, even through my career after this program, I'll be a constant um, journey of learning because you have new kids every year. So you, mm -hmm. everything you knew, you have to kind of start over every year. So that's the beauty in it as well. Um, and then also as far as like teaching, we do teach every day. I think at this cycle, excuse me, we're responsible for 120 minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> 120 minutes a day. And um, whereas teachers of record, they're, they're all on their own. I can go back and ask my mentor teacher, like, do you think I did that right? Like, did, that, did that sound okay? So I'm constantly getting um, feedback or reassurance or, you know, I would do this differently yeah. as I'm teaching. So that's the... Story. Like in real time. Mm -hmm. so that's good. That kind of goes back to your... Um, Gray's Anatomy mm -hmm. uh, analogy yeah. there. Yeah. I think my attending or something, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my attending doctor is just kind of like standing over me all day and just kind of like, mm -mm, change that real quick. And, but that was good, that type of thing. So. Yeah. I think one of the most amazing things about residency is the intentionality behind everything. I always tell the residents, like, it is great to teach a lesson, but when you move into being a great teacher is when you're intentional with everything that you do and every move that you make when you're in the classroom. And we've been intentional with residency. So our training sites, which are Simple Elementary, Slaughter Elementary, Westport Middle School, and Wagner High School, we intentionally chose schools with dynamic principal leaders, mm -hmm. right? Our leaders that are serving as principals and administrators are just phenomenal. There's nothing that they would not do to make sure our residents are successful. Um, and then we intentionally chose schools that have the characteristics of what a lot of our AIS schools have, but they're not in AIS status. And that's because of mm. the teachers in the school building and the principals and the leadership there. So our residents have the support system that they need to be <coughs> successful. And they also have the opportunity to learn from amazing mentor teachers like Mr. Hall who embeds them in the PLCs, which are, are our professional learning communities. So they really work with them intentionally throughout the year. Mr. Hall, do you want to tell us more about <coughs> what it looks to be, what it looks like to be a mentor teacher and kind of what you do day to day to support the residents? Well, I'll tell you, as a mentor teacher, it's, it's hard on us too. Um, and I'm going to tell you the main part is actually giving up some of that autonomy in the classroom. Uh, we're still responsible for moving these students, especially right now coming from a pandemic. And you have some students who weren't in school, some students in San Diego not been eating, some students, I mean, it's so bad. And, you know, we have that pressure to, oh, these kids got to move. So giving up some of that so that they can learn so your resident teachers can learn and they can get their feet wet and that's hard mm -hmm. that's hard and i know a lot of teachers that struggle with that but on a day-to-day -day basis i have a resident he's pretty awesome so it's not like that i'm worried because i'm not you know but most of the feedback that i give him is little stuff that he can fix easily so I know that some other people may be having those issues, maybe having issues about, oh, oh we, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, I gotta reteach this. Yeah, Mr. Hall, I have not had those issues at all this year. And that's, that's awesome, right. that's awesome. So it hasn't really been too rough. The only rough part for me has been just giving up some of that you know, some of that leadership. And I know it's, it's probably tough on some of the students too, you know, because you have different people teaching different lessons. So it's almost like I got to get used to his voice, and then mm. I got to get used to his voice, and then maybe he teaches this way, and he teaches that way. And I tell my resident all the time, 
to put your lesson together so you own it. So mm-hmm. you own it and you feel good about it. Don't try to teach it like I teach it. So even though we're in the same class, you know, I want I want to learn how to get his mojo. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's it's been awesome. It's been awesome. And just to add to that, it is a, a, a constant reflection. So when, when as a, as a uh, resident teacher, you're always reflecting on, okay, what could I have done better? Mm-hmm. What did I do this time? Did I have the student's attention? Did somebody get away with something they weren't supposed to get? Did I miss that? <laughs> did I catch that? You know, so it's, it, it, you're constantly reflecting on mm-hmm. your day and how, it, and how it goes, which makes it even, and then to get the feedback from your mentor mm-hmm. teacher too, uh, helps, helps to strengthen that helps to make you a better teacher because I'm not package ready. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. Yeah, yeah. I will be. <laughs> and I think that it's big for us coming from the administrative lens to recognize I'm not trying to make 30 little silliness, right? So a lot of our feedback is questions. I noticed that the students were still talking while you were talking. Are you okay with that? What was the sign or symptom that you saw that could have foreseen that? Right. So really allowing them to establish who they are and own it so that we do have a dynamic, diverse group of teachers going out as opposed to just one teacher that fits into a mold. And we talked a lot about the support, right, going through the application process, um, becoming a resident. What types of supports are available to you post residency programs? So I'm really excited. Um, We have been working on a vision for how LTR will move forward and genuinely have sustainability, um, not only in their residency year, but through their beginning years of teaching. And so our vision, if everything goes as planned and from my leaders, they're saying that it is going to go as planned we will actually be moving our coaches out to loop with the residents. And so when I say moving our coaches out to loop with the residents, we have one coach that is in the school building every day supporting the residents in their growth and in their teaching craft, providing that ongoing feedback and Mm. yes, evaluating as well to make sure we meet our benchmarks, but they're really there to support day in and day out. And so next year, we will move one of our coaches that is supporting them right now to the role of supporting them through retention Mm. and classroom readiness. And so not only will they have their building administrators for whatever school they decide to work at and teach in, they will also have one member from the LTR administration that is there to support them every day to make sure they're successful. So when they go through that survival period, because all teachers go through it, it is very normal that you wake up and you're just trying to get to the end of the day so that your kids make it home safely is is the goal for that day. But we'll be there to say, hey, I got you. If you need to take a break, I'm gonna come in and teach this reading lesson for you. And then we're gonna talk about what we need to do in order to get you back into a scene. That's, man, that is major because there's nothing like having top-down support. And so you getting that support top-down within the school community, it's just supplemented by top-down support from the district. So Mm -hmm. I think that helps bring it full circle. I think that's ultimately why the program is rapidly expanding like it is. That's very exciting, very exciting. So one question I do have, I think it's kind of going back to what Jada was saying about taking that step back, right? When I was um, working with the program, that was a sensitive um, area for some. And you mentioned like once you come to the program, what position or rank do you enter as and kind of what does that pay scale look like? Okay. I was speaking to you. Okay. Numbers? Open numbers? Yes. So residents, we earn a $30,000 salary during our residency year. Um, That almost doubles once we finish our residency year. So Mm -hmm. like I said, the sacrifice is worth it if you can just kind of don't buy the bag or don't go shopping (laughs) for a year, you know, (laughs) you just take a step back and, you know, 
the sacrifice is worth it because you do. It is that thirty thousand dollars salary, which it looks different for everyone. I know mean, a lot of people in the program have kids or they're married, so they're working with two incomes. Um, for people like myself, I, it's just me. I don't have any kids, so it, it affects different people. You have to just kind of analyze your current situation and figure out what's best for you. But um, like I said, it does basically double. Is it is it just the that thirty thousand dollars salary? exclusive or are there other things that kind of go with that as as a package benefits we do get benefits okay. we got we okay. get benefits yeah. we do um and you get like full benefits as it because you are a, through this program you are an employee through jccs so it's not like um a lot of people think it is just like your student teaching or you're observing you're an actual jccs employee so you do get paid um, when everybody else gets paid, and then when people get bonuses, we got those bonuses. Well, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But again, I just want to reiterate, it doubles after that first year. Mm -hmm. That's good. And we know it's not all about the compensation, but, you know, it's important to be supported mm -hmm. while you're going through the program. And I think that's that, that's a major commitment from mm -hmm. um, from JCPS. On top of the, also um, the tuition reimbursement opportunity. Uh, which um, again is a is a big perk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, for me personally, it's, it's really not about the money uh, because in my career I've, I've made more than what I'm making right now. It's just remember my why. Mm -hmm. Why why am I here doing this right now? What is it that I see in these kids that I can contribute to to help them to be uh, become better productive citizens? So that that's yeah, that's that's, that's my motivation right there. You remember earlier when you asked me, like, what is it that you're looking for as far as character? Absolutely, yeah. All that, all that all right there. <laughs> Prototype. What we're looking for. Prototype. Exactly. That's awesome. Um, so what type of um, grade levels and or content areas can you enter the program as a resident? So definitely elementary. Okay. Um, also, when it comes to middle grades and high school, we do subject areas of math, science, social studies, and language arts. We are working, our university partners are working um, adamantly on assisting us with also developing a special education trackway for individuals that are interested in teaching special education and also hopefully early education. Mm. Um, so looking at our preschools and so forth and ensuring that they're adequately staffed as well. Nice. One question I love to ask, um, and it kind of goes back to that why, what inspired you to do the work you're doing now. Can you recall a teacher or educator that planted a seed in you early on that has been watered and you've grown into that? Who is your inspiration? I think I'm, a, I'm open that to everybody. I can start Kick it. because I have the, like she, no one compares my elementary principal, Miss Angela French Cole at Ottawa Elementary. Um, and I have the privilege of being related to her, <laughs> my auntie. Um, That's awesome, but, um, That's awesome. Yes, she absolutely is the epitome of who I would love to be in education and just all of the the stuff she poured into me and my classmates and every like everybody just loves Miss French Code. Mm -hmm. And then also um Miss Carrie Lee. Um she was principal at JCCMS when I was there. And earlier I said it was a lack of rep representation. I mean in the classroom. But in elementary and middle school both my principals were African American mm -hmm. women and seeing them in places of power and um, they were able to have that representation for students who looked like me when we were in the classrooms and there wasn't much of it. Mm -hmm. It was just important to be able to go sit in Ms. French Cole's or Ms. Lee's office and you know I just felt seen or heard mm -hmm. in those moments and so I wanted to be that person for someone else but I, I eventually want to go into administration but being that person that first line in the classroom is also where it counts too because mm -hmm. you're the first person they see every day so, you're with them all day especially at the elementary level so 
That's the thing that you know, I had to plug them. To plug them. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Awesome, we're gonna cut this part. <laughs> I think um, we're gonna go back to this question definitely. But what I loved about your response is acknowledging like both of my principals were of color, but my teachers weren't. And I think that that's a big problem that we see in the field of education a lot is that we get we get minority teachers in the classroom and more often than not, they're dynamic in what they do. And so they don't stay in the classroom long because they're ready to step into those leadership positions. And our struggle is really being able to replenish that pipeline so that we have both teachers of color in the classroom and administrators of color leading the buildings. Mm -hmm. And so Ms. French Coles actually still works with the residency program. Awesome. So from being a principal in elementary to now she's retired and still pouring into residents and future teachers. I think that that speaks to the legacy mm -hmm. and the trailblazers that still have their hands and in the residency program and building future teachers. My, te my teacher would be actually I love Bowling Green, Kentucky, but I didn't have any teachers of color when I was in school. Um, I had some some good teachers, and I also recognized that I had some teachers that were not good teachers, mm. and I recognized the gap of frequently being the only student of color sitting in a classroom. Um, and so I don't really have that experience of a teacher that poured into me, but as soon as I stepped foot on Western Kentucky's campus and said, I'm going to be a teacher, I had all kinds of mentors pouring into me. So I would say Dr. Bonnie Marshall okay. is the one that I, I'm like every day, as long as I, oh, okay, I'm feeling her steps. I'm, she's proud of me. Okay, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing the yeah. right thing. I'm yeah. making the right decision. So that would be my person. That's, that's a, so the person that I can think of uh, that was the most influential is my mom. So my mm. mom was an educator okay. uh, for 30 years uh, with JCPS, uh, so much so that she was my first grade teacher. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that interesting. Was interesting. Yeah. How about that? Her best friend was my first grade teacher as well, oh, so they, they worked together. But I would say she's always been that person who uh, inspired me to teach, but I was run like, no, that's not what I want to do with my life. You know, my, my background is in, in management. That's what I have my undergrad degree in. So that's the, that's the career field that I chose. But little did I realize that she was telling me I had to go through that to get to this. Mm -hmm. So little did I realize that she was really, okay, go ahead and do what you want to do, but you're going to eventually come back come to this. Back, yeah. Because management is nothing more than teaching as well. So, you know, you have to uh, make sure that you have all your ducks in a row with your customers. You have to take care of what the uh, administrators, what those uh, district mm -hmm. managers are mm -hmm. looking for. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make sure that you are supportive of your employees for whatever it is that they need. So I had to encompass all of that teaching. Teaching, yeah. That's teaching. I was like, well, okay. And then so this opportunity presented itself, and, but because of her, that's why I think I'm around today. Nice, so. nice. Your calling is your calling. <laughs> your calling is your calling. Well, I had some great teachers <clears throat> when I was growing up, but that's not really what led me to this field. I, I was working in residential, and, um, and I ended up working at the school. And the, we had a couple of teachers who I was working at that um, were not good teachers. And, you know, no names or anything, but I tell you, they, they just seemed like they had one foot out the door. They didn't care genuinely about the students. And I started thinking, I could do better than mm -hmm. that. I could do better. This is where I was going. And I was like, I don't care about the kids way more than I know I could do better. And that's what got me started right there. And I was like, I feel like I had something to offer. So, you know, it, yeah, I, that's really it, what got me. Right it <laughs> influenced you in a different way, exactly. right? But I mean, you know, I, it's, it's a lot of young people out here. And don't get me wrong, I did a lot of mentoring even before. Some sports, you know, football, basketball, done some things in the community, you know, and it was cool. But for some of the, some of the, some of the teachers that I met, 
that were not very great. I, yeah, I, I can I can get down with that. Mm. That's what really wasn't that Interesting. Who From, was your favorite teacher? Wow. A product of JCPS, right? I am. I am a JCPS product. Um, I did some I did two years at Ballard and two years at Wagner. And mm, between the two, there's one teacher that sticks out. Um, Mr. James White, Westport mm -hmm. Middle School was, uh, I think, the biggest influence on me. Um, and I think for me, it was more of his focus was discipline, right? Good educator, but the way he educated was with discipline, right? He had a very structured classroom, very structured. And I'm not, you know, we, we looked at it at the time, it's like, man, this guy is tough, man. This, you know, he's, but I think in, well, I think in hindsight, when I look back, he was instilling discipline, right? Contributing to the classroom, which I think turns into contributing to society and giving back. And um, he was just a very supportive person. Um, so yeah, I would say for, from an educator standpoint, Mr. James White was probably the biggest influence uh, that I had from JCPS, for sure. Yeah. So I think that what I am interested in knowing as we get ready to wrap this up is what are you guys most excited about when you think of having your own classroom and like you said, six months, it's mm -hmm. all you. Mm. What are you most mm. excited great, about? Great question. I am so excited to, well, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to miss my kids that I have this year, but I am so excited to just get kids and meet them and learn them and really enjoy who they are. They are so precious. And like they, they me and my kids cut up all day, every day. We learn, <laughs> we, we do, we get it done, but we cut up all day and just building those relationships and having my kids come back to me years after they want to come give me hugs and tell me what they're doing now. I'm just ready for those relationships to mm. not only be built, but maintained and just to see the growth and see the impact that I can make in the world and in this field. I think my excitement is going to be beyond when I get in the classroom. And let me explain that. Um, my excitement is going to be when I see those kids graduate from high school, they come back, Mr. Trey, I remember when you were in such and such, and mm. this, this, and that's what's going to be exciting for me, is seeing those kids just further down the road, not just next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to tell this story. I'm not going <laughs> to tell my student's name, but in, I think it was around 2012, I used to lead the uh, Educators Rising program for JCPS, which is a student group of kiddos that want to become teachers, and we would take them... Um, in competitions in the mm. state, in the nation, actually. My kiddos were geniuses. They were geniuses. Um, but we were in Orlando, Florida, and it was an overnight field trip. Like, they were literally my kids for five days. <laughs> I know, right? There was like 80 of them. <laughs> um, but I had one of my kiddos. He, to this day, is still one of the individuals I am closest to. But I had told them, don't even bring your swimsuits because you're not getting in the pool. Like, right? This is the parent meeting. Like, I'm telling you all, we're not going to the pool. So don't bring those swimsuits to Florida with us. It's a whole liability thing, right? Like, I can't get in there to save you, so we're not going. Um, so it's a Saturday night, and I get a text message from another kid that said, did you tell us we could get in the pool? <laughs> I sure did not, <laughs> but wait, wait a minute. So I go down to the pool, and I'm full mama mode. Like, uh -huh. in front of everybody, I'm like, get out the pool. <laughs> Definitely a scene on TV, right? Yeah. Um, and so Can my imagine. kid is now in med school at the oh, University wow. of Louisville. He has, like, one year left in his residency. Wow. And he's about to graduate. So, you know, they had the coat ceremony. 
And, you know, I send him like, oh, my gosh, I'm so proud of you. He's like, yeah, I can go swimming when I want to. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, wow. it's like you said, those relationships, those the relationships last forever. And your kiddos definitely become a part of society to where they're pouring into additional people in the community. So well, I don't know that it's him that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome story. Um, leave us with one final thought. Why Louisville Teacher Residency? Um, why Teacher Residency? I would say that, and I know that it looks like it's a biased opinion because I'm leading Teacher Residency in the district, but I came from a traditional program. Right, so I actually got my undergraduate degree in education. And I think my really only regret when I think back over my career and I'm like, what could I have done different? Or what, what should I have done different? Is I think that my first class, I was too focused on surviving because I didn't know what real teaching looked like. And I had to go through that year of we called it KTIP back then, the Kentucky Teacher Internship Program. And that was their authentic field experience, right? When I'm already responsible for making sure these 24 students are reading at the end of the year with me and they can do their multiplication or whatever those learning standards are, right? I was learning with them. So I would say teacher residency because we take away that gap. Mm. When you step into the classroom, you at least know what's going to be expected of you and what it should look and feel like so that when you're not successful or you are struggling you recognize hey i need to reach out to somebody because it's not supposed to feel like this and you have that support system there to hold you up and to make sure you're getting through it and so i would say why teach a residency of you're better prepared you build the network and you also don't have to look back 12 years down the road and say, I, I kind of failed my first group of kiddos when I didn't know yeah. what to do my first year of teaching. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for joining us. This has been another episode of The Pillar. I'd like to thank our guest, Mr. Stringer, Ms. Fisback, Ms. Bridges, and Mr. Hall. Thank you guys. <laughs>